Welcome back. So second half of the week, I started by scuffing up the main spar, and there you can see it's um, that's where it's going to be bonding to the aft bulkhead. And I'm still just working on here the top cap where it uh, bonds to the top skin of the strake. So we've got to scuff that up so it uh, bonds uh, nicely. And the guy started the process of laying up the first of these uh, large wing skin molds. And so here you can see Jeff this time decided again to uh, spray on the black top coat and um, just get a smoother finish so when um, they start putting down the first layers of uh, glass they just go down easier so uh, yeah you see he's basically just got that uh, thinned out nicely so it puts a nice coat on there and I've been working on getting the radiator and the uh, fan there sort of made it together so you can see I've got those little tabs there bolted on there so I had to you know put some little um, fasteners in there and get that all sorted out so those are ready to be welded and I'm just uh, dropping that up at Britt's place to have him weld that on quickly um, instead of me sort of trying to mess with it and here it's all hands on deck with the guys that are laying down the uh, cabosil mixture around where the um, any anywhere there's a sort of steep transition which is mainly where the rubber profile is that rubber sort of bagging profile that we put on all those so just basically put a, a lay it in there and smooth it down to sort of a 45 degree angle that way uh, when you put the fabric down on there, it'll lay down nicely. Obviously, you can't just bend the fabric around a 90 degree curve, so that's why we do this. And it doesn't um, compromise the mold or anything. In fact, it makes it kind of stronger in those areas because that cabosil mix ends up being uh, very hard when it's uh, set. And here's Zach uh, cleaning up and getting ready to release that uh, center console stack that he uh, laid up um, the day before. You see, he's just basically cleaning off the tacky tape from the mold there and here you can see there it is released from the mold and that came out nicely so that, that, as I said that's the stack that the GTN uh, 750 will go in and sort of sits you know in between the lower dash and the center console and here the guys have the first layer of glass down and they're wetting it down um, with the resin actually because of the way this glass kind of um, absorbs or um, you know, picks up the resin. They've actually used a bit of cabosil in there as well to sort of thicken up the resin mixture and get a better finish that way. So anyway, just a lot of square footage there, but basically got to get it all nicely wet down before they put the second layer on. And a little bit back to our uh, oven enclosure. So there's the four walls. Um, so they're basically the two side walls, which are two panels each, and then the two end uh, walls. So those are done. We're actually waiting on a little bit more of that material so we can create the roof and have some for the floor as well. And here's the guys laying down the second layer. So they ended up basically putting that one down and then peel plying it. And then um, you'll see in a little bit the following day they came back and did the core and finished it off. Um, but anyway, it's looking, looking good right there. And I went over to Brit shop on uh, Thursday morning to drop off that radiator and here you can see it already made some progress on the engine mount there. It's welded up a few of those um, areas there on that one tab. So that's moving along. And here the guys have laid down the core material and, all, and then the next layer of uh, glass over the top of that. And the reason why we're doing core on this one, it just it's going to make it a much more stable mold because it's so big and such a, you know, a lot of square footage. It's easier to do it this way than have a whole bunch of different bracing in there, which may like print through wherever the braces go across it. So just kind of doing it like you're actually laying up the part by putting the core in there makes it better. And much like laying up a part, there's a you know the perf film there and the breather fabric, and then of course a bag on there, and it's basically the tacky tape all around the edge there, um, in order to you know create a good seal on there, and the whole thing uh, you know goes under vacuum just like it's a normal part. So here you can see Jeff's, you know, just working his way around there where the tacky tape is and putting uh, darts in where he needs to sort of allow more uh, more bag to have, you know, room to sort of expand around the actual part itself. You can't just sort of drag the whole thing over there because the bag doesn't stretch that much. And now they've got the vacuum hooked up uh, with actually uh, three separate connections there. So it's drawing uh, plenty of air out of there. And you can see you've got a nice uh, tight bag on there and it's uh, working well. These are the two molds again for uh, creating those parts for the gear um, attachment points. 
and so you can see the core and the hard point there the FR4 pieces have all been cut ready to lay up and Devin and Zach pretty much working on those with Jeff's guidance so here you can see they just um, already laid down the first uh, couple of layers of carbon there and they're just um, putting the hard points into place um, with a bit of uh, cabasil sort of you know just to wet them down nicely so nothing too complicated there but you just got to sort of follow the, the steps required and back to our door frame so this is the first one that was laid up but now the next step is to actually bond these hard points into place we decided not to do it while we we're laying up it was going to be easy to do it sort of after the fact but they all need to be trimmed off because we you know when I created those I didn't know how tall they needed to be I wasn't sure of the profile so uh, what I've done is I've gone and uh, t drawn a profile off the inside of the fuselage and I've created these little things there, and they show you uh, where I need to cut so I'll be cutting on on the underneath of that white thing there basically drawing a line there and then cutting across that to sort of reduce the height of those things and then they'll fit in nicely and you see there's a couple of places in here where we had core inside the door frame this is obviously in the fuselage here where I had to um, cut out the core there so that kind of shows you how that will sit in there um, inside the door frame but again it needs to be sort of trimmed off to length first so that's the next step uh, for next week is to trim those off and then um, be able to sort of bond those into place in the frame and then the frame will be able to go into the fuselage there and fit nicely and here's the first of those gear brackets there and you see Jeff's basically just uh, laying up the bag there and just getting it all nicely sealed prior to uh, hooking up the vacuum to it so and I believe um, he's being very environmentally friendly there and uh, reusing a bag from before which is nice um, so there you can see now it's under vacuum and uh, drawing nicely pulling all the air out so that part there is a multiple there's like four parts in that one particular mold right now so um, come Monday we'll be able to release those and get them trimmed off and that's just one step closer to having everything we need so we can start bonding all the fuselage stuff together and back to our oven project so this is the kerosene heater that we're going to be using and we're going to use it with a thermostat control um, so it sort of comes on and off as it needs to um, and you know we can set what the temperature scale schedule is going to be um, you know heating up the oven and cooling it down and such so uh, that's going to work out nicely for us and there's also a fan there with a motor we're waiting on another one of those those are just basically to circulate the air inside the enclosure and back to our wing skin mold so here it is um, with all the bag and everything all cleaned off there and so it came out nicely it hasn't been released yet um, we're going to be putting I believe we're going to be putting some bracing around the outside before we release it or maybe after I'm not sure anyway but you'll see that uh, more of that uh, next week and in between everything else going on the guys have managed to get this one and now all finished with the, the sanding and the waxing and they've got the rubber profile around there so that's the first of the upper wing skin um, plugs that's ready to have the mold later still have to you know cut some core and fabric and stuff for that one but basically the the plug is ready to go now which is good so only one more of those to finish off and lastly while you watch Devin and uh, Zach lay up the, the last of these uh, gear braces um, I'll give you some more updates so I've been working with um, a company up in Connecticut who's been really helpful with respect to um, information on the turbo setup so we figured out exactly the two different turbos that we're going to be used now for the compound system so I'll be ordering that um, probably next week and all the different bits and pieces that go together and getting that all sorted out so we have that ready to go for the prototype and also we went over um, uh, 800 deposits in escrow during the week so it's a bit of a milestone and lastly uh, what remains now before we can bond the fuselage together is just bake that main spar um, pop these parts out that you're looking at right now and get the last door frame done and we're ready to start bonding the fuselage together anyway that's our update for the second half of this week and thanks again for watching